and welcome to Jackrabbit Trader, where we teach you how to stop predicting and start reacting. My name is Steve, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the stocks to watch for July 10th, 2017. Hope everyone had a great week. I know it was a little bit uh, iffy, really, until Friday, especially if you were uh, coming into the week long. But we did talk about a couple short setups, a couple long setups last week, but we also talked about the importance of looking at the weekly chart and i'm going to have a post about this this week so uh definitely be on the lookout for that but really for the long-term stuff and the long-term trades that i do i, I i'm only really concentrating on the weekly charts for just this reason um you know i want to be in these trades long term and i want to look at stuff from a longer term perspective instead of getting so bogged down with like the daily uh, back and forth, especially when we're in like a consolidation or, or you know chopping around. Um, I want to definitely kind of take that step back, zoom out a little bit, and really concentrate on the the overall trend. And we did that last week, where we identified some really good setups, um, you know, and identified some that didn't work, some that worked. Um, but you know, again, looking at it from the perspective of a weekly chart. You know, here on the SPY, if you look at it, where we're just really consolidating, right? I mean, at this point, we're just moving sideways here. That's all we're doing. Uh, it's nothing, anything crazier than that. But you could see that twice we've tried to, to come down below this 240 level, and twice it's been bought up, all right, last week and this week. But if you take a look at that on the daily chart, a little bit different here. Let's clear this out so we could see all right but again looking at it from a daily chart it looks like you know kind of like the the trend is over you know you see that we do have this uptrend in place but if you're looking at you know support levels you could say well it broke a support you know maybe it broke this level at 2042 or I'm sorry 242 maybe it broke that you know, on this bar, click, click, what's going on? All right, well, I guess that's not going to work. Uh, but maybe we broke on this bar here. Oh, I keep clicking until it works. Let's, let's try an arrow instead. Maybe on this bar, it's not working either. We broke down, okay? Here we broke down, next day back up. Here, broke down again, came all the way down, still held that 241 area, back up. Then on Thursday, broke down, back up. All right, so it's a lot more complicated when you start looking at the daily chart, in my opinion, all right? And that's really why I concentrate on the weekly chart. If you look at it from this perspective, you know, it really kind of looks a little bit cleaner and it looks to be where something that you would feel comfortable still being long in the stock market and I think you can still be long the stock market um, you know until like I said until this 240 level really starts to fail and then maybe this trend line starts to fail I think the SPY is just really consolidating the gains that we've had since the beginning of the year I mean from the beginning of the year you know up where where you know we started the year at let's see do, 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 do. Here's the first bar. All right, so if you want to take the close, 227 or at 242. I mean, not a huge move in the SPY, but you know the stock market has been trending higher. The Qs, which were a significant you know uh, weight on the market the past few weeks, you could see the big bars that we we've encountered. You know, one here on the week of 65, another one on 626. But what have we done? We've really just gone sideways if you look at it from that perspective right all we've done is gone sideways uh, we came down we tested this level at 135 almost to the penny twice we've held above 137.50 multiple times all right where we do break below it during the week but we end up closing higher now we have somewhat of a hammer all right and the hammer is essentially where price comes all the way down closes back at the top of the range so if you look at it it looks like a hammer you got the, the body of the candle with the handle all right those are usually reversal symbols and whether it is or not 
you know it remains to be confirmed the, the confirmation is a close above 138.25 and when you can get that close above 138.25 then maybe you can say all right well you know either we're going to test this downtrend line or maybe that is the bottom and you know nobody can really tell you at this point whether it is or not but again we're still just holding support look at the diamonds dow all right the dow looks like nothing's going on all right we're still within point you know hundreds of points of the highs we're not talking thousands of points of the highs we're talking hundreds and you know on the deep on the diamonds the high here we actually hit a high this this week was the high here was 215.38 um but the closing high ultimately was this bar here and that was 213.74 so technically we hit a new closing high this week um so again you know and we'll see that in the in the stocks to watch we have a lot of industrials that are hitting the the uh the the list um financials hit the list last week or, or two weeks ago and the last one iwm all right really just consolidating above that recent breakout all right you can see multiple times where we've come in and hit the lows right around this 139 area so essentially testing this the resistance from this longer consolidation we're now testing it from the top side all right so what was resistance has become support that is typically what happens in in strong trends um but again you know we had this big move in iwm and it's really gone sideways for a majority of the year not the one that you want to really look to be long but nonetheless it's not really a weight on the market the weight right now is the cues and if the cues can turn around and you know who knows where this market goes but um i would love to see more rest honestly i i think a longer period of consolidation similar to what we had back in the end of 2016 uh you know would set up a nice move instead of maybe a, a breakout that gets sold pretty quick you know again not knowing uh what actually happens we're just going to follow the price and right now to me the price is saying you could still remain long the market um looking at the i don't know what's going on here my stuff's not working today but looking at the sectors all right you can see if we sort by the last 30 days the xlf has been on a tear it's similar to a lot of the trades we've looked at you know bac and jpm that we had i think either last week or the week before you know they're all working and you can see it's that same pattern where we break this downtrend and now i've continued higher i did add jpm in the jackrabbit club so again if you're not a member of the jackrabbit club uh, it's free, completely free. You see exactly what I do each and every week in my long-term accounts, and you can follow along. You can help it, use it to help develop your own process. But we try and go in depth with position sizing and support and resistance, and a little bit more education in there. Um, so again, it's right on uh, any of these pages. You're you're more than welcome to fill out your name and email address and, and join us. Um, so. You know, with that said, we are going to be adding another trade this week, um, and it's going to be in uh, off this off the stocks to watch list. But you know, that only goes to my email subscribers, so it's it's a way for me to to really push the uh, the email list and you know keep some stuff only for uh, for my members. Uh, XLV, you know, again up four point six nine percent over the last thirty days, um, and you can see we had a nice move up. And it really just consolidating XLI, which has been on a tear. The industrials, Dow Industrials, right? Uh, and you'll see we have a couple industrials in the list this week um, with American Airlines and Eaton. But industrials are sitting at the top of the list. Materials have kind of turned around. They're, they're, they've been consolidating for the past three, four weeks. Um, maybe this bar kind of triggers a reversal. Now, once again, again, you want to stay away from the XLE. Just continues. To move lower the xlu all right just continues to move lower the xlp we had some trades last week that we talked about in uh, gis gis xlp is the consumer staples but gis is uh general mills we talked about a short setup in there you could see that continuation uh has followed through this week kellogg all right same thing has followed through this week um so you know you want to try and stay away from those the xlk right the 
tech sector. Uh, it's a very similar look to what the uh, the cues are. So you know, with that said, there's some definitely some pockets of strength in the market. You want to try and be long those. You want to be short some of the um, the weaker sectors. Again, longer term trades, I only I'm long only. There is no short in longer term trades for me because I want to ride them as long as I possibly can. Um, but for my daily trading, you know, there is long and short, and that's something we can get to uh, down the line. But you know, for right now, I'm looking at a few stocks that are going to pop up on the list. Uh, AAL American Airlines. All right. So what do we have here in American Airlines? Well, let's pull up the weekly chart that I already annotated. But you can see we've had this nice move. All right. Trend line is in place. We've had a consolidation between 50 and 42 ish. All right. We've come down, bounced. And then the, over the last three, four weeks, we've just really moved sideways until this week where now we have a nice breakout. So uh, this breakout, most likely I would assume, you know, again, assuming and and if I was going to put some money behind this, I would assume you would see some type of resistance around the 56 level, which has proved to be resistance before. But look at every time we've hit that 56, you know, we've pulled right back. Hit 56, big down day or down week. Hit 56, big down week. You know, and now we're coming into it again. So, you know, we're expecting the expected and we're expecting to see maybe some some resistance here. But that's not to say that that resistance can eventually be broken and maybe we trade above 56 and keep moving higher. DHI, all right, consumer discretionary name. All right. We've just moved uh, sideways through this large, very, very large consolidation and and. You know the box is the box but you know you could see here that we've essentially traded between 34 and 24 for a long time and now maybe starting to set up that move to the upside here uh, with a new breakout blue skies you know if we go back five years I don't think let's go back five let's go back ten years just to double check yeah I mean we're at the point where we're, we haven't seen these levels yet so uh, you know again these are things that you need to take note of moving forward and and really try and concentrate on what's working and what's not uh, e-trade ETFC again we talked about the financials working uh, last week this one was lagging we still we were waiting for that breakout over 38 you finally got that breakout all right so again you know moving higher not exactly the the, the prettiest bar uh, from a weekly perspective, but nonetheless, it triggers a new high, and you know I'm going to present it to you guys. So uh, here you could see the, the resistance or the support would be down here around 32. So if I were actually getting long this name for the my portfolio, that would be my stop. Would be 32, and my position size would be super small right now, and I'd look to add to it uh, moving forward. But again, those are all things that we cover in the Jackrabbit Club. So if you want to see how I do that uh, specifically. Definitely go ahead and, and um, sign up using the, the the box that I had pointed out before. Okay, sign up here. It'll be on this week's stocks to watch. You'll you'll be seeing in the same box, the same setup. And you know, again, I hope you guys enjoy this setup because it, it shows us all the trades and and all the the names that we looked at last week all right if you just thumb through them it's a great way for me personally to really go back to a specific date and see what i was looking at what i was trading and it helps me from a uh you know from my trading perspective myself all right this way i could always go back and see exactly what the chart looked like what i was thinking um and you know go from there but anyway eaton etn all right you see this nice little consolidation here along the uptrend line okay so you have the uptrend in place okay and you know you have a couple of different options for where you want to set your stop that stop could easily be at the closing lows around 75 or maybe if you want to give it a little bit more room you can use those wick lows down there around 74 phm all right another name that has continued to move higher uh, another discretionary, another home builder. So home builders taking off this week. 
but you can see it's a pretty straightforward setup there um, and actually looking at it from a weekly perspective uh, you could really say it broke out last week uh, if you wanted to get technical with it but you know with these two wick highs i was really waiting on a little bit more confirmation got that confirmation this week okay and you can see if you want to get long that 22 is your stop prudential get another financial another one looking uh, very similar to the the etf with the xlf very similar to uh, e-trade etfc where you have this downtrend line that was broken all right and now you have this move above that downtrend line so very simple uh, this is almost more like a pullback trade for me but you want to get long in here I would say 10270 is your stop but just be aware you do have some resistance that you can see it actually did hit this week and has pulled back slightly around that 112.50. The other thing to be aware of is I'm not throwing out the earnings dates, whether you hold through earnings, you don't hold through earnings. That's up to you, completely up to you. Um, so if you are looking at these names, then definitely make sure that you're aware of the earnings dates. Uh, TSCO, all right, this is a, what do we got here? Consumer discretionary. This is one that's not working, okay? You can see we've had this downtrend in place. We've tried to hold, let's zoom out a little bit because it'll be a little bit clearer. Uh, the, the stock tried to, um, or actually pushed right through this 5760, but then tried to regain it, all right, where then it acted as resistance. So just as it, on the upside, previous resistance can act as support. On the downside, previous support, support back from the middle of 2014 can now act as resistance. See the stock came down, tried to move back above it, didn't, and now it's breaking down. So, you know, this is a one that you could short, look to short, maybe even down to this 42 area. And again, very simple trade setup, you know, where you set your stop, maybe 57, however aggressive you want to get with it. But, you know, from a long-term perspective, I'm not looking to short, I'm looking at that more from a trading perspective. TSO, now I did say energy names are not performing well all right so again this is one that you know you have to use your judgment on but you can see a very similar pullback setup where we had this downtrend in place that was broken and then we finally broke above this 93 area and finally closing above there with it with a pretty solid bar um, and now you can look to maybe ride this up to the highs and last but not least UAL again those charts the uh the airlines right aal uh this week dal last week and now we have ual which is united continental but this is one that i'm looking more along the lines of it broke out it pulled back and maybe now is starting to uh, round itself to go back higher so this could be one that if you want to tweak this support area you know, maybe it's testing the resistance and maybe right now it's, it's holding that level and then again looking to go higher. So if you want to trade those pullbacks, remember we talked about pullback trades. Um, this is definitely a spot you could look to get long and probably use a stop under this week's candle around 74-ish. So, you know, risk about five bucks and see where it takes you. But um, this is a classic pullback trade, the one that we try and find every once in a while. But um, again, you know do with it what you wish if it was something that you were long already you could look to add to that position other than that you know you could trade it accordingly so um you know the week overall was pretty choppy until today friday um uh, and you know we'll see what happens we'll see if we get that follow through on uh monday to me it almost felt more like a short covering rally than anything else you know stuff that was down is now up but you know, again, we don't really read into it. We just follow the price. And to me right now, with all the sector analysis and the indices, uh, it's telling me you could still stay along the market and you could take some shots with some of these trades. So uh, for the Jackrabbit Club members, head on over. You'll, in, you'll be finding an email in your inbox shortly. And you can check out that video that we're going to do some trade management. And again, you're not, not a member. Nothing holding you back from hitting the 
subscription box below and entering your email and joining us in that video. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great rest of the weekend, and we'll see you next Friday. Take care.